Welcome to another midweek, midweek moment. As we celebrate today the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord, let us listen to the, uh, to the Gospel according to Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This week, instead of an actual catechesis per se or reflection, I just wanted to expand on the explanation that I shared with the parish at the Masses this past weekend regarding the changes in staff positions and share brief, briefly what the new titles will be and what responsibilities they will entail. First, I modeled the staff positions according to, the, to a four-pillar model, namely the parish's mission shared by four commissions, spiritual life, parish life, human concerns, and stewardship. Over all of those commissions was the parish council, that consisted of representatives from each of those commissions. This is a model that I have seen work very well in the past and in other parishes, which is why I decided to model the staff along the same lines and move forward using this same model. So there are now positions that correspond to each of the four commissions that will help the parish achieve our twofold goal of praying well and teaching the faith. Under spiritual life, there are two staff positions, coordinator of parish prayer life and coordinator of music ministry. The positions of coordinator of liturgy and sacramental coordinator have been eliminated and replaced with the coordinator of parish prayer life. This coordinator is different from a, from a coordinator of liturgy. In reality, by virtue of his office, the pastor takes on that role, which will be the case here moving forward. Liturgy has always been a, one of my passions and I have taken efforts to study its various aspects from inside out. The coordinator of parish prayer life will work closely with me and soon to be Deacon John Benz a liturgy a, on a liturgy board, which I will soon reform. Our coordinator of parish prayer life will now be Mary Ann Mueller. She will be responsible for many of the behind the scenes duties that are related to Sunday and weekday liturgies, parish liturgies, and any time that any group of people in the parish come to gather together for any type of public prayer or formal, uh, public or formal prayer. Continuing in her role as the coordinator of music of the music ministry will be Sue Clemens. She has done a fantastic job at reviving our parish's music ministry that I felt that it was not necessary for me to change her title or find a different person to fill that role. Under parish life, there will be two positions, coordinator of parish life slash evangelization and coordinator of faith formation of youth. As a faith community of disciples, we must always be concerned and focused on how ongoing faith formation is at the heart of every activity and or event held at the parish, 
whether those events or activities are for the entire parish or hosted by a particular organization for its own participants. For this reason, we will have a coordinator of parish life slash evangelization to help oversee the following. The coordinator will, man will manage the parish calendar of events, which will not just simply be a matter of clerical work, but one that requires this position to be in tuned to the life and movements of the parish in the effort to guide and direct the ongoing faith formation for everyone in the community. This position is also meant to extend the parish's efforts at making disciples by looking at how the parish is or needs to be more an evangelizing community. This position will need to be in tune with current cultural trends in order to help the parish fulfill our mandate to go into the world and make disciples. Corresponding to this position, there will be a faith formation board that will assist this position in assessing and guiding how our parish always engages in ongoing faith formation from womb to tomb. Currently, this position is yet to be filled. But we will continue to have Pat Kamak as the coordinator of faith formation of youth. I am sure that she will be as committed to the task as she has been before. In the area of human concerns, there will be one position, the coordinator of human concerns. A life of charity is a, con is a concrete response to Jesus' call to live out the gospel message. Unless we are doing that, we are missing a key component to our faith. Sheila Pluchar will continue in, continue in her role as co coordinator of human concerns. There will be likewise a human concerns board consisting of volunteers who already work with Sheila to guide our charitable efforts. As for stewardship, we will have the following positions, business manager, bookkeeper, and coordinator of maintenance grounds and facilities. Nancy Pfeiffer will continue her role as the parish's business manager. It will be her duty to keep our financial records up to date and report on our fi financial needs as needed. We will continue to have our finance council to advise me on financial matters and help Nancy and I to maintain transparency in the ways the parish uses, uses our material resources to be good stewards of your gifts that God, uh, that God has given to you, to you. To assist Nancy, there will be a bookkeeper position which will be Karen Cal Calcagno. She will help the business manager in many of the day-to-day -day tasks of running a small business such as a church. Our coordinator of maintenance grounds and facilities will be Matt Pfeiffer. It will be his duty to stay one step ahead of general and unexpected maintenance or repairs that are needed in order to maintain a beautiful and safe campus. He will also coordinate the schedules and duties of our custodial staff. In addition to these positions, I have renamed the administrative assistant titles to vital support. The title of administrative assistant did not seem to express how important of, uh, uh, how important of a role such positions play in the life of a parish. First, we will now have a coordinator of media slash IT and office aid who will be Barb Thies. In this day and age of modern technology and internet communication, a parish cannot survive nor proclaim the message of Jesus without using this vital mode of communication. For this reason, I felt it important to have a person on staff dedicated to this area. Peg Sebenalar will continue as a part-time aide to Pat Kamak with the Faith Formation of Youth. With the strict guidelines about the return to classes for children, it became important that Pat have as much backup support as necessary. Moving to the position of receptionist front desk while maintaining some of her duties to the religious ed program will be Jean Aiello. She will, in many ways, become the face of the parish for those who come to the office 
to conduct whatever business is necessary. As I mentioned over the weekend with this restructuring, the parish should easily reach the goal of creating $150,000 savings in salaries and benefits alone. This new structure will also allow the parish to remain on track with our mission. Of course, this might not be the only cost-cutting measure I will have to take, but this should be a huge help to avoid getting into a bigger financial mess in the near future and become a good step forward. As for information, please pray again for our young candidates of, uh, for confirmation who will receive the sacrament this Saturday, August 8th. Bishop Lou Tilka will be the one to confirm them. We will live stream both of the confirmation ceremonies at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. for family members who will not be able to attend because of limited attendance. Because, and please pray as well for our first communion candidates who will receive the Eucharist for the first time on August 15th. We will also live stream those masses so that family members who are unable to attend because of the strict, uh, strict attendance restriction will be able to at least see and see and participate through the live stream. And let us close this week with the prayer for the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.